here in my studio, just uh, got that new projector there. But you want to know what I like a lot more than that projector? The knowledge that's used to operate the projector, okay? So here it is. You got your little uh, on and off switch. Yeah, you got a little on and off switch. You have the AXA Technologies logo. Now when you turn it on, you'll have to wait about mm, 10 seconds and then this screen will pop up. So push the little down arrow right there so you can select uh, your little pictures and then click the SD card. You can also use a USB if you want to, but I prefer the SD card because it stays within the unit and it clicks in there. Now on top of the SD card, you also have an HDMI in. So you can literally plug in your laptop, open Photoshop up in full screen, and then start drawing light on anything you want to draw light onto. It has a USB port, a TV tuner port, a VGA port, a headphone port, a power port, and an RCA port. Uh, it also has a tripod port right there, so you can hook it up to a tripod. Very convenient. As far as any other button, you have one knob right there for the focus, and then you have your arrows and the OK, a back button, a power button, and what, uh, whatever button. You can pick whatever you want. I'm going to pick some sort of halftone pattern, click the thing, and then it will project the following pattern onto whatever you want to project that onto. So tips on using this projector. Because this is a DLP projector at the resolution it's at, there are a few little things to keep in mind. Number one, you're going to discover there's this little thing called uh, the screen door effect. And what that is, is the little black spaces between each individual pixel. It only happens when the projector is very far away. So as you can see, it's over there about 20 feet. Now you can reduce the screen door effect by bringing the projector closer to the projection surface or by slightly defocusing the focus ring. Now there's another thing you have to worry about with DLP projectors and that is the rainbow effect. There's a little spinning disc inside of the projector that switches colors around and it basically makes the projector act like a very fast strobe light. In fact, if you were to put this projector up to a flash slave, your flash, I found that when I did that, the flash fired rapidly in succession. You can't see it right now, but this is actually not white being projected. It's red, green, and blue changing very, very, very quickly, and you can't notice the difference. So if I go to, over to my camera and I switch the shutter speed, right now it's on 1 60th of a second, However, now it's at 1 60th of a second. Now it's at 1 400th of a second. Now what you're observing right here is the rainbow effect. This has creative applications, but if you want the image to be projected as you would see it normally, you're most likely are going to want to use around 1 60th of a second, maybe 1 80th. You'll notice that even if you're projecting a pitch black pixel, it'll still be slightly illuminated, and that's why you see the slight illumination around the projection itself. If you want to reduce this effect and make it so you can't really notice it as much, what you can do is turn on the ambient light. And as long as the ambient light overpowers the black levels of the projector, then you'll be good to go. Also notice how you get some chromatic aberration here. So there's the little green fringe, and there's the little purple fringe. You get that because the lens isn't extremely high quality. No big deal for me. This is the best thing I've found so far as far as the price and the weight and the size and the fact that it is battery operated. So you can do so many different things with a projector that it's just kind of ridiculous. Number one, if you just get a bunch of images and put them in on an SD card, you can use all those images and use that as your light source and you can project anything you want onto anything you want. It's basically like the ultimate customized lighting source available ever. You can use the projector to shine specific uh, shapes through fog and that will create very interesting effects. You can project what you're photographing back onto itself. So if you, to do this, what you do is you take a DSLR, you plug it into the projector, 
and then you put your DSLR in live view and then point your DSLR and the projector in the same direction and you will get a sort of uh, reality tunnel, if you will. There's also this little feature in the projector called keystoning. Keystoning allows you to automatically correct the perspective of the image being projected when you tilt the projector up or down. Keystoning can also be used to create optical illusions. So if you turn keystoning on, project an image onto the cement or the ground, and then trace that image over with paint or chalk, and then take the projector away, and then put your camera where the projector was and take a picture of it, that drawing will look like the perspective is correct from the camera's point of view. Another thing that you might be observing right now is the fluorescence. So like I said earlier in the ultraviolet video, if you shine blue light onto something, depending on what the material is, it might reflect back out as green or red or a different color of a lower frequency. The AXA M4 and the AXA M5 are the best projectors that I know of right now because they are battery operated. There are other projectors available that are better than these two, but they um, they cost more and you have to plug them into the wall and they're larger and heavier. All right, tips on using a projector. Number one, um, most people, when they get a projector, what they do is they just put it in front of their camera and shine it on a person just like this, just how, just how you're seeing right now, they just do that. Now, that can be cool, uh, but what you can do is actually put that projector um, at an angle like this. And what that does is that makes the light stretch out and skim across the surface of whatever it is that you're projecting it onto. Tip number two is to use two projectors instead of one. The reason why is because if you're photographing a three-dimensional object, let's say a sphere, uh, if you have two projectors, you can have light being projected at every single point around that sphere, basically if you have two. So with two projectors, you can do a lot. And if you don't have two projectors, this is the third tip. Um, you can use one projector, but instead of having a second projector, is you can use a mirror in place of the second projector, just like that, see? And you can get, you, get, you might need to move the focus ring around a little bit in order to get it right. The other tip I have is, you can put this projector very, very close to things and the focus is still very good. And that's what I like doing because when you put the projector very close, the screen door effect goes away and so does the chromatic aberration and the pixelation and everything. It just looks better when it's closer. Okay, so a few features I think they should put in the next projector. Uh, gapless video looping, that would be nice. There is a looping option in the projector already. All you have to do is play the video, push the up arrow, and then scroll over to the repeat option. And right now that would be repeat off, that would re be repeat this one video file, and that one would be repeat all the video files you have in the folder. So if I leave it at one, and I'll push the down arrow to get rid of that, you'll see it's about at the end of the video right here. There it went, the video ended, and now it's starting over again. But you saw that there was a big black space in between the video finishing and starting again. And that should be fixed in my opinion. Now, there are cool features over here. You can slow the footage down, speed it up, and also zoom in and zoom out. And you can zoom in and zoom out in images as well, which is very, very helpful. Another feature I wish the projector had was the option to play animated GIFs. You can't do that could be kind of improved is that when you're scroll when you're trying to find an image and you're scrolling through an image here uh, you can do it through the menu or you can select the image and then push the right arrow and just scroll through the images that way but if I do this it for even from right here you see that it takes several seconds just to load the next image and you can only view your images one at a time uh, and that's very very slow you can rotate the image and you can, ro you can zoom it in and out. It's very useful. 
Okay, so differences between the M4 and the M5. The M5 is a little bit smaller. When you put them side by side, you know, that's the difference. Other than that, there is not too much of a difference. This one is 100 lumens brighter, according to the website. And this one has a 70 minute battery life, and I think this one has a 90 minute battery life. And this one, uh, when you're holding it, your thumb is right there by the focus ring, which is really nice. With this one, the focus ring is on the right, and it's smaller and a little bit more difficult to work with. This one has an automatic keystoning option, so if you were to aim that up, it'll automatically fix it, just like you see there. Whereas with this one, with keystoning, in order to get keystoning at all, uh, it's not that great. I'll show you what it looks like. You have to select the image and then when the image is there, you then push the up or down arrow and that will get you your little keystoning option. But when I, when I push the button uh, over and over and over again pretty fast, you can only move it that much that at this speed. So that's why I like using this one because it's instant. You do it and it's just like that. So now let me fix it back. Push, 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 push. And finally we're back to zero. And that hardly was um, that big of a difference at all. Other differences, uh, the menu system on the M4 is better. Uh, here's what it looks like on the M5. You go to the settings and there you get a few options and they're separated between each different page. And those are your options right there. There's this little option called blending. Supposedly that makes the black levels better, but when I turn that on, it also looked like it kind of lowered the brightness of the overall image as well. So I don't really like that menu. Over here, the menu is just better. Everything is on one page. I don't know what DLC means. I looked that up and I couldn't find any information about it. If anyone knows what that is, leave a comment. This one has the TV tuner. This one does not. And this one has the RCA, the three RCA plugs. With this one, it has an AV in, and you get the little uh, converter thing for it. So the M5 also comes with a case. You get a little remote, and you get a little tripod. That's what the case is. It's a nice case. This one doesn't come with a case. The fans in it, if you're shaking it around, the fans kind of stop working. So here's what it sounds like. See how that, uh, when you're shaking around, the fans kind of stop working? With this one, that's not the case. When you shake it around, the fans are really good no matter what. So for whatever reason you're spinning your projector around on something, you would probably want to use this one as opposed to this one. And with this one, the that little button thing has been fixed, so this casing is very hard. When I push down on it, nothing budges. With this one, if you push down right here, uh, this but the whatever button gets pushed and that is not the best thing. It's uneven. It kind of does that. Which isn't the best. See in the corners there you get the little plastic uh, edgings. And they did that probably because on the M4 these little things, you got the little smudgy soft material right there. Those are stickers though and those tend to fall off quite a bit. See that right there that one fell off. Yeah, this one is nice when it has all four of those stickers on it, but because one of them fell off, it does the same thing on this corner. Build some sort of plug that you could plug in there. Um, they're not included with the projector, though. Oh, that one doesn't have one. So, never mind. Scratch that idea. You can't do that. Here's what the footage looks like when they're side by side. The M5 is on the left. The M4 is on the right. There really isn't that big of a difference. All right, so what happens when I try to go to this picture? Oh, unsupport file. <laughs> so I click it, and I get nothing. Same with the, this one. This one actually shows the thumbnail of it, but it's still, when you click on it, it says uh, unsupport file. Why is that? That is because you can only load up JPEGs that are saved with the baseline option selected when you're in Photoshop. You can't save it as a progressive JPEG. Same with PNGs, you have to save PNGs in a certain way as well. So that should definitely be improved here. They should be able to load any sort of JPEG or PNG file or GIF or animated GIF or whatever.
The M4 has this plug right here that actually can be disconnected just like that. It snaps off in two. That can be good because if, you're, if your projector is on a tripod and you trip over the cord, well then just the little thing will come unplugged, not the entire projector. It won't come falling down with this one. Uh, it's just one little thing there. So if you trip over the cord, then the projector will probably go flying around with it. Also with the M4, power pack, uh, it comes with a USB charger right there. So that's pretty cool. This one doesn't have that. As far as them going in cases, here's what it looks like. Here's the M4 in a case. It fits in any standard case, a Pelican case, it fits fine in that. And then same with this one, except this one's smaller, so it takes up less room. Here's what the front of each looks like. One thing they could do is make it round like this, but also have filter threads on this so you could screw a filter in front of the light source. And now what you're seeing right here is the closest you can put the projector to something. And then there, there are the screens basically um, side by side next to each other. They do look, I think the M5 screen is a little bit bigger as well when it's projected further away. You can't notice it because um, they're so close to each other right now, but I do think the M5 has a little bit bigger of a, of a projection throw ratio, if you will. As far as the external casing, uh, if you wanted to project something downward through glass, you can do that. You can set it down at that angle, and even if it is, it might be at a slight angle, you can still project it downward and not have to really worry about it falling over. If you wanted to project it something on the ceiling, uh, you can't really do that because there is the TV tuner in the way and there's at a slight angle right there and that doesn't really work. You can't project anything on the ceiling. If you wanted to project something in the vertical orientation, uh, you still can't really do that. I mean, you can, you just have to be extremely careful. Uh, otherwise, it's going to tip and fall over just like that, see? This one has been improved in that regard. The casing is completely flush on all four sides. Uh, whoops, the lens uh, does protrude a little bit outward right there. It's not too big of a deal though. That doesn't stop you from projecting it downward. And it doesn't even make it uneven. Uh, I'm pushing at the top here and it's not fiddling around. So that's pretty cool. So I do really like how everything is flush. And even right there, the focus ring, you can put it on its vertical and you can project something in the vertical orientation. However, this is not a perfect uh, 90 degrees here. It's at a slight angle on all four sides. And that is annoying because it's at a slight angle. So the thing that you project outward is going to be at a slight angle. It's not going to be straight up and down how it should be. And that, my friend, is slightly disappointing. All right, that's my video. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, click the link down below and read everything down below. I have an image pack for sale that contains hundreds of images that you can load up in your projector. And you can project all those images onto whatever you want. I will see you in the next video.